Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah. Good God Almighty. Praise the Lord. I bring you word in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. Now, listen, friends, we've just had uh, technical difficulties. That's why we are uh, behind schedule in a few minutes and we're working very hard uh, to take care of that minor hitch in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. So just give us a few more minutes and we'll be rolling in the precious name of Jesus. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I bring you word, it's life. I welcome you to another broadcast in the precious name of Jesus. Now hear this, there is a word from the Lord, hallelujah. And that word <laughs> is for somebody listening to me right now. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. They're working so hard to fix this glitch. But I know that God's word is going to come forth so strong. And God's word is going to come forth so powerfully today to the praise and glory of his holy name. I want you to share this video Whatever platform you're watching us from, go ahead and share, 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 and let's let's let let somebody be blessed by it. Praise God! I'm receiving signals that we're we're almost there. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! So if you can, I don't know, can you guys just let me know if you can see us on all our uh, streaming platforms live? Just make a comment and let me know if you are watching. Praise be to His holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. I see some hallelujahs. I see some glory to God. Praise the Lord. Tell me what where you're watching from. God bless you real good. Hallelujah. God bless you real good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me know where you're watching from. Are you watching on Facebook Live? Can you see us? Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Ay, hallelujah. They're working on it. I just give us a few more minutes. Very soon we'll get running. Praise be to his holy name. Just give us a few more minutes and we'll be up and running. While we're trying to sort this uh, uh, technical error out, could you invite somebody, tell them, I bring you word is about to go on live in the precious name of our Lord Jesus, Yeshua Messiah. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to your holy name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right, we'll just go ahead. I think YouTube is on. Praise be to his holy name. Well, one more time, I bring you greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I believe, God, that something is about to happen today, and uh, I have I have very strong feelings that that is why this is, this is happening the way it is happening. But hear me, child of God, if you are watching right now, there is a reason, there is a plan and there is a purpose of God for you tuning in right now. Are you listening to me? I bring you word. It's coming to you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. And I've got a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. This is the day that you have made. We are determined to rejoice and be glad in it. 
Have your way, O oh God, and speak your word to your people. Every man, woman, boy, girl that is watching right now, that is listening to this word that is about to come forth, let there be a testimony in the lives of your people. Let there be a testimony in the lives of your people. Let there be a transformation in the lives of your people. We pray that a change has come, the change we've been waiting for. We give you the glory, Lord, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. I bring you word. We're going to 1 Kings chapter 18 this Sunday. If you're watching, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 8. Praise be to his holy name. 1 Kings chapter 18. Praise be to his holy name. 1 Kings chapter 18. If you are there, say amen. 1 Kings chapter 18. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 18. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready for God's word? Hallelujah. 1 Kings 18. Praise the Lord. 1 Kings 18. Praise God. If you are ready and you are watching, say hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter Chapter 18, I'm going to read from the 23rd verse. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 23. Praise God. I'm trying to set up multiple things just because of those that are not able to connect with us right now. And um, I pray God that I'm able to do it for them to also be a part of it. Uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. <laughs> just bear with us. Bear with us today. Amen. Bear with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right, I'm going to read from the 20, 23rd verse. He says, Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put on and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call on the name of the of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken verse 25 and elijah said unto the prophets of baal choose one bullock for yourselves and dress it first for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked and cried, uh, cried aloud, uh, 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 and said, "Cry aloud, for he, for he is a god. Neither is he is either is taking uh, or is pursuing or is in a journey or preventure his sleeping and must be awaked." Verse twenty-eight says, "And they cried aloud and cut themselves as their manner." Uh, with knives and lashes till blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past that they prophesied until the time of the evening sacrifice. There was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. Praise be to his holy name. Watch this, friends. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Watch this. Watch this, friends. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, watch this. Watch this. Watch this, friends. Watch this. Watch this. They cried aloud, but there was none to answer. There was nobody. No one regarded their voice. Nobody was there to answer them. Good God Almighty. Oh, my God. My God. I want to talk to you this morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you're, whatever time you're watching me, on what I call the God that answers. Oh, Lord God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. How did I call it? The God that answers. The God that answers. Are you hearing me? 
the God that answers. Look at verse 20, 20, 29. And it came to pass, uh, verse 10, he says, And Elijah said unto the people, Come nigh unto me. And all the people came nigh unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones in, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as as great as would uh, contain two measures of sea. And he put the wood in other and, the, and cut the bowls in, in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, fill four barrels of water and pour it on the bond of sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar and filled the drench also with water. We're going to, we're going to stop at verse 39. Watch this. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came nigh and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. In, in, in Watch this now. Uh, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord and that thou hast torn their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Praise be to his name. I bring you word. A miracle is going to settle the matter. A miracle is going to settle this matter. Listen to me, child of God. When we came into this month of May 2021, the spirit of the living God said to us that this is our month of multiple miracles. And every day the Spirit of God has been downloading His Word, confirming it with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I came to assure you today by the grace of the Almighty God that your miracle is going to be the next to be celebrated. Your miracle is going to be the next to be announced. Your miracle is going to be the next to be publicized. Your miracle is going to be the next to be celebrated. If you believe I'm talking to you specifically as an, as an individual, I want you to just shout out. Hallelujah. I want you to shout praise the Lord, somebody. Your miracle is about to be announced. Your miracle is about to be celebrated. Why? Because there is a God that answers. Good God Almighty. There is a God that answers. There is a God that answers when we call. There is a God that answers when we pray. There is a God that answers when we lift our voices up to him in prayer. There is a God that answers. Are you hearing me, child of God? If you can hear me, say, I hear you loud and clear. There is a God that will answer. I feel the bubbling in my spirit, man. And that's why I came to announce to you that the God that answers is about to answer you by miracle. He's about to answer you by multiple miracles in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Elijah asked God to answer him by fire. But I came to let you know today that God is going to answer you by whatever your heart desire. God will answer you today with miracle babies. God will answer you with miracle jobs. God will answer you with miraculous healing. God will answer you with miraculous turnaround. That whatever was working against you, there's going to be a turnaround in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there will be answers. Listen to me, child of God. Let's, let's go to work. Let's walk these verses that we've just read. Now watch this. There are a couple of things that happened before Elijah finally prayed the prayer. Elijah was very purposeful and very intentional. I know that a miracle is what God does. 
But hear me, child of God, you have a part to play. There is something you've got to do in order for you to position yourself for what God is about to do in your life. Are you hearing me, child of God? You must position yourself for what God is about to do in your life. And you must do certain things intentionally. Praise be to his holy name. You must do certain things intentionally. Are you hearing me, child of God? Oh, there is a God to answer you. Hallelujah. He, listen to me, friends. A miracle is about to settle that which has been pressuring your life for so long a time. A miracle is about to turn it around. A miracle is about to turn the tide in your favor. But when I look at the 30th verse, when Elijah had, had told the prophets of Baal, I mean, let me give you a little background. If you read the verse before the verse we started, you find in the 23rd verse, Elijah said, he's only one man. Coming against a, the prophets of Baal, that was 450. One versus 450. But when one has God, it doesn't matter those, the number of people that come against you. When God is with you, when God is for you, when God is by you, when God is in you, it will settle the matter in a miraculous manner. Good God Almighty. Watch this. He said to them, let's make, take two bullocks. Cut it up, dress it up, put it on wood, but put no fire under it. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. They said it was well spoken. And so they went first. From morning, they began to cry unto their God. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. Anyone that is calling on a false God against you, this is proof positive that they have no ears to hear. They have no eyes to see. And they have no hands to reach. Don't fear them. You hearing me? They cried till noon time and nothing happened. And Elijah began to mock them. He said, come, maybe you, you went on a journey. What a God that goes on. Listen, we are the ones that need a vacation. Our God doesn't go on vacation. Our God neither sleeps nor slumber. Our God never turns his ears from the cries of his children. Are you hearing me? They cried and cried until they began to cut themselves with knife. And I saw something that caught my attention as their manner was. Because they were used to cutting themselves and pouring blood on the altar. But hear me. Any blood that is poured on any evil altar against you, it shall not prosper this season in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, friends. When they did all their gymnastics and the Bible said it was for the noon time had passed, evening time had passed, it was time for the evening sacrifice. They gave up. Elijah said, it's our turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. Let's, let's, let's do something now. Guess what happened, folks? The first thing Elijah did in verse 30, the Bible says he repaired the altar. He repaired the broken down altar of the Lord. And I said here, yes, I know that the Lord sent me to declare a prophetic word of miracles, miracles, miracles. And we know God is the one that does the miracle. But there are things you need to prepare. One of the first things Elijah did was to repair the, the broken altar. God said in his word in verse 30, Elijah repaired, watch this, and Elijah said unto the people, come nigh, and all the people came nigh unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. The altar of the Lord is the meeting place of God. The altar is the meeting place of God, the meeting place and the place of exchange. That is where exchange takes place. Now, I'm not going to go deep into the meaning of altars and all that, but I just came to let you, to ask you a question and to inspire you today. Is there any altar that is broken? Is there any altar of the Lord in your life that is broken? Is your altar broken? You've got to repair the broken altar of the Lord. Now, I'm not just speaking literally of the physical altar that was repaired in this text, but I'm speaking figuratively that every child of God must have a meeting place with God. Every child of God must have an altar where he meets with his God, where she meets with her God, where exchange takes place. That altar of sacrifice of the Lord that was broken 
down. Elijah did not jump into prayer first, but he repaired the altar of the Lord. Good God Almighty. I want you to know, child of God, when you begin the process of repairing what was God's that was broken in your life, you are getting yourself set for the flood of multiple miracles in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. Now, hear me. The second thing Elijah did in the, in the 33rd verse, the Bible said he put the wood in order. And I said to myself, why is it important for us to really take note of the things that Elijah did before he began to pray? Before he asked God to send down the fire. It's important because, child of God, these are things that we can apply in our lives today. We are a people, especially Pentecostals, that, are, that can be misunderstood for rascality. But hear me, we serve a God of order. There are things that need to be put in order in your life that would ignite the fire. Good God Almighty. I know the fire is going to come from above. The fire is going to come from God. The fire is going to come from heaven. But watch this. Wood is a very important material to burn fire. Good God Almighty. <laughs> My good God. Are there things that you need to restore to order in your life that is not yet in order? I want you to put them back in order. God have mercy on our soul. Good God Almighty, Elijah put the wood in order. He repaired the altar. He put the wood in order. He did the unusual. The, the, the prophets of Baal, uh, they, they just they just dressed the stuff, put it on wood, no fire on there, and they began to call on Baal. But the third thing Elijah did, the Bible says that Elijah, Makashata Yabada, Elijah said, Pour water on the sacrifice. Pour water on the wood. Pour water on the altar. He did what the others did not do. Hear me. You have to be intentional. You have to be outstanding. You have to go the extra mile. You have to do, be willing to also do, to be willing to dare what others have not dared. Because of your trust in God, when you do what you, you, you would never have dared, to do that others that went before you didn't do, then you are saying to divinity, I'm ready to risk everything because I know there is a God that answers. I bring you word. There is a God that answers. Oh, child of God, hear me and hear me well. There is a God that answers. Are you listening to me? There is a God that answers, that gives us multiple miracles. There is a God that answers. Hallelujah. Hmm. He poured water the first time. He said, do it again the second time. I don't have the time today, but I'm going to take a different session, a different message to break down this stuff that Elijah did. He said, do it the third time until the entire altar was soaked with water. And may I, may I say this to you? You know water is symbolic of the word of God. I want to let you know that you've got to pour the word on it. Are you listening to me? And you've got to pour the word on it again. I don't know what you're trusting God for. I don't know what you believe God for. I don't know what you're waiting on the Lord for. I don't know what you're being crying for God to answer you by miracle. You've got to pour the word on it. You've got to pour the word on it. The first time may not be enough. The second time may not be enough. The third time may not be enough. But you've got to keep pouring the word, the word word, the word, pour it on it. The Bible says until the entire drench was soaked with water, was filled with water. Pour the word because God is moved, not just by your physical tears running down your cheeks, but by the word that he has, you have spoken, his word in your mouth that you will speak forth, that you have spoken forth. God is going to move on that word. Oh, somebody, I want somebody to just write it out there. Pour the word on it. I'm going to pour on it again one more time. He says, pour it. Pour it the first time. Pour it the second time. Keep pouring the word on it in that precious name of Jesus Christ. And God is going to come in your direction like a flood. He's going to come in your direction like a flood. Good God Almighty. There's one more thing Elijah did in the 30, in the 36th verse. 
Watch this now. Verse 36. The Bible says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came nigh and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. <laughs> Timing is crucial. Are you hearing me? Everything Elijah did was intentional. I know that many times we've missed God, but hear me, the good thing about God, he's a God of another chance. He's not just God of a second chance, he's the God of another chance. If you've missed it before, you can recalibrate and hit it again. Elijah waited. When I read the scripture, the Spirit of God said, tell my people, move when God moves. Move with the timing of God because timing is extremely crucial for you not to miss God. The time of the evening sacrifice where God accepts sacrifice, Elisha came near to God. He had repaired the altar. He had set the wood in order. He had poured water. And then at the time, the right time, he approached God. He lifted up his voice, addressed him properly. Oh, my good God Almighty. You know what happened in the 38th verse. The Bible said when he spoke in verse 36 and verse 37, in verse 38, 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible says, then fire fell from heaven. In other words, that was the answer he was looking for. I bring you word. God will answer you by miracle. Elijah wanted fire. I want to ask you a question today. What do you want? What do you want to ask God to answer you by? What do you want? Type it in the comment section. And I declare in the name of Jesus, uh, seven days will not be over. Your testimony will be heard. Seven days will not be over. Your miracle will be consummated. Seven days will not be over. There will be a change in your favor. Somebody shout hallelujah. I bring you word. Fire fell from heaven. How do you explain that? That's why I said to you, child of God, that it, it will have to take a miracle. It will have to be a miracle. How do you explain that? I thought we've heard of hell stones falling from the skies. We've heard of rain coming down from the skies. We've heard the noise of thunders. But fire is falling from the sky. Because God is able to do anything at any time. Good God Almighty, a miracle is going to settle the matter for you. A miracle is going to settle the issue in your life. A miracle will settle this matter. That was what Elijah was saying to the prophets of Baal. Elijah, Elijah said to them, let the God that answers by fire, let him be our God. Who? Let him be the God. Who? And God rained down fire. And I decree in the name of Jesus. That whatever you are saying in your heart right now and declare with your mouth right now, God is going to answer you by a miracle. And I know, listen, for those of you that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, of course, you know it won't come in seven days. But in seven days, something will planted in your womb in the precious name of Jesus. And according to the time of life, uh, by this time next year, you're already dedicating your children in the name of Jesus. Why? There is a God that answers by miracle babies. Your age, ir ir irrespective of your age, irrespective of your biological condition, irrespective of your blood tubes, no tubes, no womb, damaged womb, irrespective of it, God is a God. That's why it's a miracle. It's not something that you can say one plus one is equal to two. No, it's a miracle. You can't explain it logically. You can't explain it scientifically. You can't say this is how it happened. How do you explain how fire came down from heaven? Elijah was not a chemist. That, uh, 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 he didn't study chemistry or physics or any of the sciences. Uh, and just, no, no, no. It wasn't a chemical reaction. It was a heavenly reaction. Good God Almighty. It was not a chemical reaction. It was a heavenly reaction. It was the reaction of divinity to the cry of his servant. Good God Almighty. Oh, glory be to God, somebody. Masha Kali Koto, fire came from heaven. Listen to me, child of God. I'm reminded of this wonderful scripture. You know, the other day, God visited in form of an angel, in form of three men, and then he turned to one. God visited a man called Abraham. 
in Genesis chapter 18 and began to speak to him after he had sown his seed and said, listen, eat with us. After, the, after he had received this offering, God said to him, according to the time of life, your wife Sarah, that same one that, one that is called barren, that same one that has not been able to give you any child, she shall conceive, she shall receive seed. And God went on and on and, and, and told him the great thing that was going to happen. Sarah heard from behind the door and laughed. Abraham himself also laughed. I'll tell you that another day. It wasn't Sarah alone that laughed. They laughed because they felt that it was already too late for God to do it. They laughed because they were saying, oh my goodness, it is impossible for this to come to pass. And God asked him a question in, in, in the 13th and the 14th verse. Hear me. God said, why, why did Sarah laugh? Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? Is there anything too difficult for God to do? Are you hearing me? That was what happened. Sarah denied that she laughed, but we all know she laughed. She was afraid. So she said, oh, I didn't laugh. There are many things God is saying that he's going to do in your life. And you look at your life right now. And you, others are not even laughing. But you are the one laughing at yourself. Because you yourself don't even think it's possible. I bring you word. There is a God that can answer you. There is a God that would answer you. Nothing is impossible with this God. In this month of multiple miracles, nothing is impossible with our God. In this month of multiple miracles, nothing is impossible with our God. Oh, there is a God that answers. Hear me in Genesis chapter 21, in the first verse and the second verse. The Bible says, and God, I need to read it. I, I can quote it, but I need to read it. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Let's do that quickly as we get ready to wrap up this session. Genesis chapter 21. As a matter of fact, I'm going to verse chapter 18 first for you to see what happened. Let's go to chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 13. Watch this. And the, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I shall I of a shorty bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son, the word of the living God. And I say to you today with the same emphasis that God spoke to Abraham, according to the time of life, God will return to you and perform his good word. He will perform his good will. God himself was the one I said, is there anything too hard for me to do? Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? Watch this in chapter 21. In chapter 21, the first verse, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, Ooh! Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, I'm, I'm so, ex I'm super excited. You know why? We have cried and laughed at ourselves too long. The enemy has mocked us uh, at us too long. We have waited so long. Some of us have waited until we have given up hope that this will never be done. There are many of you watching me now. If you be truthful to yourself, there are certain things you have written off in your life. You say, this one, I, I, this one will not happen. This one, no, no, no. I will just serve God anyhow. This one will not happen. Hear me, child of God. Even that one can happen. <laughs> Even that one can happen. Because hear me, the Bible says, God visited Sarah as he has, as he has spoken. Verse 2, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. At the set time. In Jeremiah chapter 32, in the 17th verse, Jeremiah asked the same question in his prayer. Is there anything, in fact, Jeremiah even put it the other way. Jeremiah said, there is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. There's nothing too hard for God. That's what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 32 verse 17. And hear me, friends, I'm going to close with this because hear me, if we go back to our foundation scripture in 1 Kings chapter 18, if you look at the 30, the 36th verse, what the when the miracle took place, but well, look at what happened in verse 39. The people, the same prophets of Baal, the same people that challenged him, the same people that thought nothing good was going to happen. The Bible said when they saw what God had done, they began to declare, the Lord, 
the Lord, he is God. Oh my goodness. He, they said, they said, they declared the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. I bring you word. Your enemies will see the work of God in your life. The miracle of God in your life. The testimony, the transformation, the seed you've been waiting for, the child you've been waiting for, the miracle you've been waiting for. And even the enemy will begin to declare, your God is the Lord. Your God is the Lord. Your God, he says, the Lord, he is the God. I bring you word. There is a God that answers. Listen to me, child of God. The most impossible cases rest with men and not with God. Because when you, when you bring God into the equation, what was impossible becomes a child's play because he is God. I don't know who you may be listening to me, but the Spirit of God says, I should tell you that thing you have given up on, you say will not happen, it will not come to pass. That same thing is what God wants to turn around and answer you. Elijah said, let the God that answer by fire be God. But I told you, I don't want no physical fire right now. I need some miracle jobs for you watching. I need some miracle babies for those watching. I need some miracle testimonies and healing. Let cancer die from your body. In the name of Jesus, let that tumor in your brain disappear. Let a God that answer with disappearing tumor be God. I bring you word. There is a God that answers. He came into my spirit man strong this morning and said, declare this word with boldness and I will bring everything my people trust me for to pass. Hear me. I bring you this word. There is a God that answers. I bring you this word. There is a God that answers. I bring you this word. There is a God that answers. How does he answer? By miracles. There is a God that answers by miracles. Unexplainable. That's why it's a miracle. You cannot explain it. You cannot edit it. You cannot add to it. You cannot subtract from it. You can That's why it's a miracle. The Bible says the fire fell from heaven. It, it, it licked up even the water. Good God Almighty. Remember I told you the water is symbolic of the word. The fire came and the scripture was careful to tell us that it licked up even the water. It licked up the dust. It licked up the wood. The fire came from heaven. And everybody saw without a matchstick, without the igniting of any fire under the wood, it came from above. Hear me? Your salvation, your miracle is not going to come from under. Remember, Elijah said, Put no fire under. You know why? Because he knew that the fire was going to come from above. Regardless of the natural fire that was supposed to have been put under the sacrifice. I bring you word. Help is coming from above. Miracles are coming from above. There is a God in heaven that still answers prayers. Good God Almighty, there is a God that still answers prayers. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is a God that still answers prayers. I'm so excited, friends. Forgive me, but I can't help myself. I, I can't help myself. Now hear me, when you suffer so long and all of a sudden, the people that were attacking you are now testifying to the glory of God for you. You know you've been, you've been visited by a miracle. You know God has done it. Because they said in verse 39, they began to declare themselves, the Lord, he is the God. They said it again, the Lord, he is the God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord, he is the God. In other words, they were saying the God of Elijah, he is the God. The God of Elijah, he is the God. Put your name there, the God of real he is the God. And the testimony turned around. Back up many hours before, the prophets of Baal were there shouting, Oh, Baal, oh, Baal. Baal cannot answer, but Jehovah can. The evil say, Ekwemme. And those of you watching around the globe that don't know what that means, <laughs> the, he's the living God that says it and does it as he says it. What he says he will do, that is what he does. Unchangeable, unquestionable God. Invincible God. Are you listening to me, friends? 
There is a God that answers. I know some of us have waited so long for answers. And we are, we're almost giving up. That's the reason why the Spirit of God sent me on this broadcast today. To let you know that even those things you've given up on. There is a God that can answer you. Remember if, a few weeks ago, a few days ago. I was preaching on, on uh, I think it was last Sunday for, for a Mother's Day service. Mother's Day uh, a service last Sunday. When I preached on Miracle Mother. And, and I said to you, listen. From the words of Eli, a priest that was over the house of God at that time, looking at Anna, interrogating her, mistaking her for a drunken woman. After Anna had cleared herself, he spoke in his capacity as a priest. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 17, he says, Go in peace, and the God of Israel granted thy petition. That's how I'm going to close out this broadcast today, my brother, my sister. My friend, listen to me, child of God. I want you to, uh, listen, listen, listen. I want you to hear this and hear it loud and clear. Go in peace and the God of Israel will grant thee that petition. Are you listening to me? Because there is a God that answers. That same God will grant you your petition. That same God will grant you your heart desire. Go in peace. This week is a week for testimonies because God is going to deal with the hard knock cases in your life. If fire could literally fall from heaven because a man cried out to God and said, God answer. And God answer by fire. God will answer you by miracle. God will answer you with victories. God will answer you with all kinds of, listen, all kinds of healings that medical science have given up on. All kinds of healing that even the best doctors have said there's no way. Because I hope you know that there are situations in, in medical science, so many that the doctors give up on and they send you to hospice to die. But hear me, even if you're in the hospice right now, at I command the healing power of God to touch you where you are in that bed, in that hospice uh, 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 location right now that you are discharged in the name of Jesus. Everyone in the hospice hospital, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a God that answers and there's a God that can turn around what humans call incurable. It doesn't exist with God. There's nothing called incurable with God. There's no situation that's incurable with God. There is a God that answers. I bring you word in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace. The God of heaven. Grant thy heart desire. The God of heaven grant you thy heart desire. The God of heaven grant you thy petition. The God of heaven grant 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 thy petition in the precious name of Jesus. Listen, friends. We've run out of time, but not out of word. And we had some technical difficulties when we started. But I trust the Lord that next Sunday, by the special grace of God, everything will be in the right place. And I'm going to come with a word from the Lord for you one more time by the grace of God. But guess what? I pray that when I come your way next Sunday by God's special grace, somebody will be dropping comments of testimonies. Somebody will be sharing miracles of great miracles that God have done because there is a God that answers. And guess what? He answers by miracles. Listen to me. The God that answers, answers by miracle. If God could do it in the life of Elijah, fire came. Whatever your fire is going to be, is going to fall from heaven in the precious name of Jesus. I love you, but God loves you the best. I want to say to you, keep it dead with us. This Coming next Sunday, next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also watch us on Day God. The, let me say it right, the Daily Gospel Network. Daily Gospel Network, 8 a.m. Nigerian Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 midnight Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Uh, 2 a.m. Sorry, uh, uh, Central Time. Whatever time location you may be, I'm trying my best to put it out there. Watch it. We're on uh, I'm, uh, Apple TV, Roku TV. Uh, we're on uh, Amazon Fire Stick TV. Google it. 
the Daily Gospel Network. Our time slot for now is Saturday, 8 a.m. Nigerian time, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're going to find I bring you word live there in the precious name of Jesus. It aired this last Saturday, yesterday. It's going to air again next Saturday. But every Sunday, we try our best to do a live broadcast service for our churches and fellowships in America, in, in Africa, in Nigeria, and Liberia, and our fellowships around as God is helping us to spread this gospel. So every Sunday, join me on this same platform. God bless you richly is my prayer. And I know that a miracle will settle the matter for you. Whatever it is you're going through, I declare in the name of Jesus, a miracle will settle the matter for you. God bless you in the precious name of Jesus. I love you. God bless you. God bless you real good in the precious name of Jesus. Love you. See you next Sunday by the special grace of God. A miracle.